Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's exciting virtual experience brought to you by the Hong Kong Tourism Board and Baxter Media. I'm Dan McDonald, Sales and Marketing Associate with Baxter Media, and today is Tuesday, February 15th. Today, you'll be joining representatives from the Hong Kong Tourism Board for a sensational Chinese New Year cultural showcase featuring traditions and popular activities celebrated in Hong Kong. Among other things, you'll get to see a live cooking demo on festive snacks and drinks with Chef Kathy Fang, two-time champion of Food Network's Chopped. You'll also get the scoop on the Year of the Tiger with a live forecast by Hong Kong geomancer Master John Choi. And we'll be hearing from Chris Vandenhoeven of Cathay Pacific Airways as well. Be sure to stay signed in for the entire duration of the webinar today to be eligible for prizing, as everyone who participates until the end will have their names put into a lucky draw for a chance to win one of five $100 gift cards. Also, be sure to stick around for the Q&A session with our amazing chefs and for our other speakers as well. If you guys do have any questions at all that you'd like to ask today, just type your questions into the Q&A section of the public chat box, which is towards the right-hand side of your screen. And those questions will be answered in a brief Q&A session at the tail end. And remember, this is a live session, so your patience is appreciated during any technical difficulties that might arise. I will now hand things over to Linda Ho, Manager of Trade Marketing for the Hong Kong Tourism Board in New York. Welcome, Linda. Hi, and wishing all your dreams come true and everything comes your way. On behalf of Yun, I think she also sent you um, all the very best for the Chinese, uh, for the year of the um, tiger. Wishing you good health, good wealth, and all the very best. And um, on behalf um on behalf of the Hong Kong Tourism Board, our Executive Director, Mr. Dane Chang, would like to send all of you his personal greetings. Over to you, Dan. Hello, everyone. Kong Hei Fa Choi, and warmest greetings of the season from all of us in Hong Kong. Chinese New Year is a time when people gather to celebrate family, friendship, and togetherness. I'm delighted to see you all here today reminding us that we share the same dream that has carried us through these challenging times and to travel side by side to better days and a brighter future. In the year ahead, the Hong Kong Tourism Board will work tirelessly as we prepare for travel resumption with a host of exciting campaigns and offers. I'm hugely grateful to you for your exceptional efforts to keep Hong Kong at the forefront of travelers' minds. As you know, this is the year of the tiger. Tigers are courageous, energetic, competitive, and strong. These are the qualities we have drawn upon throughout the past two difficult years, and qualities that will lift us to great heights in the days of opportunity that lie ahead. May I wish you a happy, healthy, and prosperous year of the tiger. And again, Kong Hei Fa Choi. Next, my colleague in LA uh, would also like to say a few words. Kong Hei Fa Choi, and greetings from the Los Angeles office of the Hong Kong Tourism Board with, of course, our own beautiful view of Victoria Harbor and our Chinese New Year flowers. I'm Bill Flora, the U.S. Director of the Hong Kong Tourism Board, and may I take this opportunity to wish you an auspicious year of the tiger. I'm Ann Gum from the Los Angeles office, Marketing and PR Manager. The Lunar New Year is a time of reunion and rebirth. May I wish you good health and prosperity. And I'm James Lavelle, the Mice Manager for the HKTV in LA. People born in the year of the tiger are true leaders who are courageous, energetic, and love a challenge. I'm confident by working together, 2022 will be a great year for all of us. Go ahead, Go ahead, that joy. And now, um, let's hand it over to our Canada office. Hi, I'm Michael Lim, the director for Canada, Central and South America. Go ahead, that joy. On behalf of the Hong Kong Tourism Board Toronto office, we wish you a happy, healthy, and prosperous Year of the Tiger. The tiger symbolizes fearlessness, strength, and bravery. We're confident that the tiger will drive away the evil and allow us to travel real soon. 
We look forward to welcoming you to Hong Kong when the borders reopen. Hello everyone, Kong Ai Choi, Happy Lunar New Year. I'm George Lee, the Consumer Marketing Manager and Press Contact for the Hong Kong Tourism Board. Chinese New Year is the most celebrated festival in Hong Kong. The Year of the Tiger embodies resilience, strength, and readiness to take on new challenges. We are confident that this year we are going to roar and that tourism and travel will come back stronger than ever. And I'm very much looking forward to meeting all of you and welcoming you back to Hong Kong. There is a fun program ahead of you, so sit back and relax as we learn new recipes and ways how to make the Year of the Tiger a successful and prosperous and one. We also have a greeting from our Hong Kong carrier, Cathay Pacific Airways. Please welcome Mr. Chris Vandenhoven, Senior Vice President, along with Director of Sales, Mr. Asad Shah and Mr. Marius Kastison. Chris, over to you. Thank you very much. On behalf of the entire Cathay Pacific Airways Americas team, Gong Fa Choi, Gong Zi Fa Chai. My name is Chris Vandenhoven. I'm the Senior Vice President for the Americas based out of our regional office in beautiful San Francisco, California. I'm honored to be with you here today virtually uh, to welcome officially the Year of the Tiger. Now, while we still can't properly gather or celebrate the Lunar New Year festivities, we remain very hopeful and optimistic that the Year of the Tiger will be the year finally that we can witness some form of international travel recovery for both Hong Kong and Cathay Pacific. There is no debate that the pandemic has been the most challenging period in our airline's 75 year history. And I'm sure the same rings true for many of you associated in our much beloved and now beleaguered travel tourism hospitality industry. Yet despite the ongoing challenges, we've actually had, um, we've had some some very promising and encouraging signs on the air cargo side. Many of you may not be aware of this, but Cathay Pacific is actually one of the largest air freight operators in the world. We rank currently in the top five globally and have one of the largest dedicated 747 freighter fleets. In addition to the dedicated freighter aircraft, we also flew close to 8,000 cargo only flights on passenger aircraft in 2021. We converted a number of our Boeing 777 wide-body aircraft from passenger to cargo planes. We operated some very interesting routes last year, including many around the world cargo charters, starting from Asia to the Americas to Europe and then eventually back to Hong Kong. We also are very proud of our bespoke vaccine solution program. Program. And to date, I'm happy to report that we've transported over 120 million vaccines to Hong Kong and around the world. We've also moved over 62,000 tons of fresh produce and perishables in 2021. Uh, just to give you an idea on the scale, that's roughly the equivalent of uh, 12,500 African elephants worth of food. Um, so the cargo results have certainly been encouraging and like you, we are very much looking forward to the day when we can welcome back our customers on board Cafe Pacific and we look forward to that day very much. We remain hopeful that with the high vaccination levels, the natural immunity through infection, advancements in antivirals and hopefully the continuation of milder variants like Omicron. Over time, more countries will accept the virus as in. So in closing, I'd just like to extend my deepest appreciation to everyone on behalf of the Cathay Pacific Americas team. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you for staying with us through thick and thin. And we like you very much look forward to the day when we can all get back to doing Pacific. I wish you good health, happiness, and prosperity. Thank you. Uh, Marius, are you going to say something? Yes, thank you, Linda, and thank you, Chris. Kung Hai Fa Choi, we wish you a happy Lunar New Year filled with happiness, health, and good fortune. My name is Marius Carstensen, and I look after leisure sales for Eastern North America. On behalf of the Cathay Pacific Trade East team, I would like to thank you for your unwavering support throughout the pandemic. As Chris mentioned, we were very much 
uh, we very much look forward to getting our passengers back in the skies and to Hong Kong. The past two years have been ex an exceptionally challenging time, but we are hopeful of brighter days ahead. The continuing increase in vaccination rates, along with borders gradually starting to reopen, are encouraging signs of things to come. And we do look forward to partnering with you during the recovery period. Assad, over to you. Thank you, Marius. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Gong he fa choi. My name is Asad Shah. I look after leisure sales for Western North America. On behalf of my team, I would also like to say thank you for your unwavering support for our airline. We look forward to the Year of the Tiger in hopes that it will indeed be the beginning of the end of this pandemic and give us all the opportunity to fly once again on Cathay Pacific to Hong Kong. A special and heartfelt thank you to all of our partners in the travel trade segment. On behalf of all of us here at Cathay, wishing you a very happy Lunar New Year filled with happiness, joy, and prosperity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Team Cathay. Now, I would like to share with you the 15 days of Chinese New Year. February 1st, usher in the Year of the Tiger. The tiger symbolized power in Chinese culture. People born in the year of the tiger, 1974, 86, and 98 are strong, competitive, confident, and well-liked by others. Chinese New Year is all about traditions. We celebrate 15 days of Chinese New Year's versus the 12 days of Christmas. So let's take a quick look. Six days before Chinese New Year, it's time to buy flowers. Flowers resemble growth, prosperity, and love. And five days before Chinese New Year, we make puddings, corning, go, meaning rising higher. Does it sound like some, something? Does it sound like something called promotion? So that's why we love the Ling Go. On the second day before New Year, it's time to go out with the old and in with the new. It's time for a thorough spring cleaning. Uh, my name is Yuan, and I'm with the Hong Kong Tourism Board in Toronto. First of all, Gong Hei Fa Choi, wishing everyone a very healthy, happy, and prosperous year of the tiger. Now, on to continue with what uh, Linda was presenting. Um, I believe she uh, went to the part where it's um, out with the old and uh, in with the new. So uh, two days before the Chinese New Year, uh, it's uh, time for a thorough spring cleaning. Uh, it's not, it's, it's not a, a good thing to sweep away any good luck on the first day of the New Year. And also it's a good time for, uh, for people to buy new clothes, uh, new clothing to wear for the New Year to bring in the New Year as well. And on New Year's Eve, it's time for a family get together for the Big Bowl Feast. It's a very important uh, family reunion meal, much like the uh, Thanksgiving uh, dinner here in uh, North America. Um, and uh, people on, on the first day of the new year, people flock to uh, Wang Daixin Temple, which is a Taoist temple in the eastern part of uh, Kowloon, to uh, offer prayers uh, for a whole year of blessings and good luck. Some people also go to Mamo Temple to pay respect to uh, different deities. And one of the most important traditional activity over the New Year period is to visit one another to bring New Year greetings in person. It usually follows a hierarchy in terms of order of visits. Usually we will visit the most senior or elderly people first, such as grandparents. Next would be the family of the oldest sibling. So after visiting grandma and grandpa, if my father is the oldest in the family, my aunts, uncles, cousins, and siblings will visit at my parents' house, and so on and so forth. So now you understand the significance of the cleaning, making snacks, decorating with flowers prior to the new year, and getting new clothes. Because in addition to auspiciousness, uh, it's also practical as we welcome visitors to the house. And when we visit, we bring along mandarin oranges, which signify prosperity as the name of the fruit sounds like wealth and the color of the fruit is also close to gold. And we get to eat lots of Chinese New Year snacks during the visitations, such as the gok zai, which you will learn to make later on. Plus, children and uh, young unmarried uh, adults also get red packets called lai si for good luck. These red packets contain money, so of course the kids uh, would love to get as many as possible. Now, the third day is considered a bad 
well, bad day, relatively bad day, because it's easy to trigger a row or argument for no apparent reason. So uh, you should avoid, or people should avoid, you know, um, meeting with people that you they, they have potentially uh, bad vibes with. But after three days of intense celebrations, it's time to return to work on the fourth day. Bosses usually give out red, uh, red uh, packets to the staff for good luck. And business owners always open the business with a dragon or a lion dance to bring in prosperity and good fortune. And you will get to watch a lion dance today. Now, seventh day of uh, the new year is everybody's birthday. We call it Yan Yat and greet people with um, happy birthday. This is also the day we open the red, uh, red packets. And we round up the celebration on the 15th day, which is today. It is the Spring Lantern Festival. And once again, families will get together to celebrate the full moon and a dessert, which is a sweet rice ball called Tong Yun, uh, will be served. And this signifies together, togetherness and completeness because Tong Yun is, is a sweet rice ball. And so everyone is blessed with everything they need for the coming year. This you will also learn to make today. And with that, it's time to celebrate with the lion dance. Dan? All right, here we go. Welcome, everyone. On behalf of the Hong Kong Tourism Board, we would like to wish you a happy Lunar New Year. San Lin Fa Lok, Gong Hei Fa Choi. We are here celebrating the Year of the Tiger with our friends, family, and the lions. Lions are symbols of good luck and prosperity and are often seen during special celebrations. It is believed that they scare away evil spirits. The legend goes, hundreds of years ago, a village was bothered by a monster that would come down from the mountain and wreak havoc during the new year. The villagers decided to make their own beast to scare away that monster. They combined many different animals and mythological creatures together to create the lion we see here. When the monster came down from the mountain, the villagers danced around with their new lion costume and banged on drums and pots. It worked. The monster was afraid and left the village alone. Ever since then, this dance has become a tradition for the New Year's. Often, you will see the lions eating lettuce or greens for good luck. The word for green leafy vegetables is choy and sounds similar to the word for prosperity. The lions chew up the choy and sprays it out like spreading prosperity to everyone it touches. Please enjoy our lion dance performance, sending good luck and prosperity to you and your family. San Lin Fai Lok, Man Si Yu Yi, Gong Hei Fa Choi. Bo Bo Go Sing, Gong Hei, Gong Hei.
And Linda, you should be back now. Yes. Um, let's uh, introduce uh, Kathy, uh, Miss uh, Kathy Fang. Then. Can Welcome, we? Kathy. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Can you see me? Uh, just let me confirm. Let me see. Looks like it's loading up now. There we go. Welcome, Kathy Fang. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, everyone. Gong Hei Fat Choi. I get to do the most fun part of Lunar New Year. It's um, sharing with you the delicious food that we get to eat to uh, bring in a wonderful New Year. So for 2022, I'm going to be demoing two of my favorite snacks, sweet snacks that we have over Lunar New Year, as well as a cocktail, because who can do celebrations without a cocktail, right? So that's the most fun part. I'm actually gonna start with that first. I'm gonna show you how to make an orange blossom. And why did I choose orange? And that's because oranges, you'll see if you go to Chinese families or Asian families households, orange kumquats, pomelos, tangerines, you're all meant to bring luck happiness and prosperity. So they will have that everywhere in their home. So the cocktail naturally will need to have that in there to bring you lots of luck. Okay, so I have a cocktail shaker here with some ice. I am going to add about one, two, three, four. I just count to four. That's the amount of gin that I want in here. And then I'm gonna add an ounce of Campari. Campari has this beautiful red hue, and red, as you can see, is good luck for our Chinese New Year. So I've got the red glasses, the red shirt, red, you know, people have the red envelopes. So we'll do one ounce of Campari. And I have some fresh squeezed orange juice, but you can also just buy fresh squeezed orange juice. One ounce of that goes in there. And then we are going to Shake it up. And we're going to pour ourselves a lovely glass of orange blossom. Okay. This is a very refreshing cocktail. And more than anything, this is going to symbolize for us a new year full of luck, happiness, and prosperity. Okay. Cheers to that because we all know we would love more of that in 2022. Yum, okay, that is really good. So I'm gonna move this aside and show you the next sweet treat we're going to make. Uh, Linda mentioned gok jai as something that we eat over Lunar New Year, and essentially it is sweet, crispy dumplings. Yes, that is what we have right here, and that is, Super delicious. It is actually very specific to the Cantonese region of China. And traditionally people make it at home and we like to actually share and gift each other these little crispy sweet dumplings. It has a crispy skin and it's filled with usually peanuts, coconut, sugar, and sesame seeds. The version that I have here is actually made with pulverized peanuts, coconut, sugar and chia seeds. I always like to add a little healthy twist to some of our traditional dishes and so I've tossed a little of that in there. But um, one other thing that I left out, most of the time they put lard in that mixture. So instead of lard I actually used coconut oil and then I mixed it together, popped it in the fridge so that it creates this sort of almost lumped up, uh, clumped consistency. How are we gonna wrap this? So a lot of families make their own dough, but I realize that is actually a lot of work. And so I actually use soy gao pei. That is just dumpling skin, the round one. Not to be confused with wonton pei, which is wonton skins. Usually square and much thinner, we use the round ones, soy gao pei. All we need is a touch of water that I'm gonna put around the edge like so. And then I'm going to add the filling into the middle. If you can see right there. And then I'm just going to seal up 
the edges and turn this into a half circle like this, right? Okay, if you don't wanna do a lot of work, this will do. You can actually go ahead and fry this in a pot of oil at 350 degrees for two to three minutes or until golden brown, right? This is the color that we're going for. Or if you wanna go fancy, grab some more water, drag it along the edge of the dumpling like that. And then we're going to just pleat it, like crimp the edges. So what we're going for is crimping, crimping, crimping. And then we've got this beautiful little dumpling that will then fry into this. Okay, so that's how we make gokdai. Moving on to our last sweet treat, which is probably my favorite. Um, it is also very appropriate because traditionally you have this dish on the 15th day of the Lunar New Year celebration, Tong Yun, which is sweet rice balls. Direct translation is something that we eat and it symbolizes togetherness, right? And family. And also like if you think about a ball, right? It's very smooth and round. So you want the rest of the year to run smoothly like a ball with no hiccups. So that is what we're going to end with. I have here a bowl with some glutinous rice flour. And then the sweet rice balls, when you think of like, what is that, what is that right? I'm sure you've had mochi before or even like had maybe mochi ice cream. So it's exactly that. But instead of the ice cream filling, we put traditional fillings like black sesame, peanuts, taro, um, or we actually make ones that don't have fillings that are small, but then we make a beautiful soup that goes with it. So when we say tong yun sweet rice balls, they're actually served in a hot soup, sometimes savory, but most often time it's actually sweet. The broth that we're going to be making here is made with dates, brown sugar, and some ginger. Why did I choose dates? That's because dates are something that are also very symbolic to have over Lunar New Year. It's something that a lot of households will actually have for people when they come over, when the guests come over, we have dried dates for people to snack on. And I'm going to use brown sugar, but a lot of times we actually use rock sugar. So all we need is some pot of water. I'm gonna put all this in there. I just tossed all of it in there. We're gonna let that come to a boil for five minutes to bring out that delicious date and ginger flavor. I'm gonna show you how to make sweet rice balls. Rice balls are very easy to make. Oh, I have the water here actually. So what I have here is, like I said, glutinous rice flour. It's not regular rice flour, it is glutinous. So glutinous doesn't mean that it has gluten, it's simply rice flour that has the characteristics of flour that has some gluten. So it's a little chewier um, than regular rice flour. That's what you would need to make sweet rice balls. I have some water here that's warm. And then I'm going to use a chopstick, but you can also use the whisk. And I'm just gonna actually, you see I'm just using that to Mix up that water with the flour. The ratio sometimes can be different depending on how much water and flour you use. So it's really just based off of how much water does it take for this to turn into the consistency of Play-Doh. So you see I keep spinning and whisking until it turns into a ball, okay? It's very easy. Very soon this will turn into a ball. And if you feel like, oh, there's a little too much liquid in here, you can always go ahead and add more glutinous rice flour. So adding a touch more in there. My sweet soup is cooking. 
And so now this is starting to form a clump. You see that? This is what we're going for, right? So we want to keep stirring, keep stirring until it forms a nice pliable dough that resembles play dough. And this is actually quite nice. Do you see how quick that was? That was very easy, right? So this is something you can definitely make at home. Like you can make a traditional bowl of sweet rice balls, tom yun, with your family, even if it's something you've never had before. And kids love this activity as well. I've done this with my kids and I bring in food coloring so then, you know, they can add some red, some green and make like rainbow colored rice balls. I put it in there and they're like very proud that they were able to make this um, and they'll eat all of it because kids are always proud of what they create, right? So you see, I'm just actually mixing it or kneading it, so to speak, into a ball. So the side. I'm gonna add a little flour, rice flour here, so that we can form little round balls. Okay, spread that out and put that on there. And what I'm going for is just this little log like this, right? I'm gonna create a log, and then I'm gonna grab a little knife and I'm just going to cut equal portions. I just use my pointy finger to make sure the sizing is the same. And I grab this and just roll it into a cute little ball, right? I'll put this on this little plate here. We're going to go make another one. And we'll make another one. And then we'll pop that in the pot. And it'll be done within about two minutes or until they float. And then I'd let it probably boil for another 20 seconds. Okay, so I have, let's make six, even numbers, okay? Even numbers is what we're going for. So I have six little tongyun. We're gonna pop them in here and let it boil. Wash my hands. And I'm going to use my little ladle, give it a stir. And the reason why we want to stir is because we don't want those sweet little rice balls to stick to the bottom. We want to just make sure they start floating in that water and boil and cook. And once that floats to the top, it's actually ready to serve. I have this beautiful bowl here. Um, our family uses this during the New Year's. It's got peaches on there. Um, I'm gonna serve this in this bowl, and I'm gonna show you the beautiful color that you actually see in the soup with another clear bowl. Sometimes, you know, it's a little hard to see in that bowl, but I'll show you two versions of it. And if you really, if you don't actually want to make this, you can buy the frozen version, which I'll show you. If you go to a Chinese market, they have these frozen sesame sweet rice balls or different fillings, right? It may not say sesame, but it'll be sweet rice balls with other fillings. You can just boil these and they have this filling that oozes out that's so delicious. Okay, so these are done. I'm going to serve up a bowl here. It smells so good. So I'm gonna do one bowl here. I'm gonna do a clear one so you can also see it. Okay, 
So I'm going to show you what it looks like in my bowl. Let's actually put a piece of ginger in here. So you've got all the ingredients. So you've got, you see that? The beautiful dates. And then you've got the beautiful, let's get the rice balls. They're hiding. Look at that. Those beautiful round tong yin. And the broth is sweet. Like honey. And then I'm just putting it in a glass bowl so it's easier for you to see. It actually has this beautiful sort of red hue to it. And then you've got these smooth, round, slightly chewy rice balls that pick up on the flavorful broth that it comes with. Um, so yes. Now you know how to make two very traditional Lunar New Year treats as well as a beautiful cocktail. All of this will bring you happiness, luck, prosperity, and togetherness and family. So hopefully you guys can do this back at home because I've pre presented, I guess, some very easy ways of doing this. Thank you for joining me and Gong Hei Fa Chai. Wishing you guys all the best of 2022. Hi. <laughs> Welcome, John. Just want to make sure we can hear you okay? Hi, everyone. Hi, my name is Master Choi. I'm very honored to be invited by the Hong Kong Tourism Board to be the guest speaker today for Feng Show 2022. First of all, I wish everyone good health, good fortune, good luck in the Year of Tiger, and Gong Hei Fa Choi. I'm sure most of you know what Feng Show is about. It means wind and water. Feng Shui is a tool to analyze your home fortune and a play to place items to escalate luck. So how do we boost fortune in your home and office? As it's shown on the diagram, Feng Shui has many layers. It has the yearly Feng Shui layers, 20 years luck Feng Shui layers, environmental and surrounding Feng Shui layers, building Feng Shui layers, and finally it comes to individual home Feng Shui layers. So today we'll read the yearly fortune Feng Shui system that plays the most important part in the current year from mid-January to mid-September. So first of all, we'll locate the stars in each location. If you refer to the diagram, we'll start at the left side, which, which says east. And east, we have gossip. We use number three to refer as gossip, and it implies gossip, conflict, argument, litigations. Southeast, we have academic. We use number four to refer academic, and it implies study, intelligence, romance, but not marriage, anything related to documents. Next, we have south, we have happiness. We use number nine to refer to happiness. It implies stock investment, happiness, marriage, giving birth, future income, and new customers. Next, we have Southwest. We have illness in this area. We use number two to refer to illness, and it implies minor illness, things happen to mother. Next, we have West. We have destruction this year. We use number seven to refer to destruction, and it implies robbery, fighting, Woman gossips, things without an end, litigation, nerves problem, or even it can be going so worse it can have home records or fatal illness like cancer. Next, we have Northwest, we have career. We use number six to refer to career, and it implies career, fame, authority, but it can also meet bones problem, robbery, or you get hurt by sharp objects. Next, we have North. We have peach blossoms. We use number one to refer peach, peach blossoms, and it implies love, social relationships, intelligence, and stable income. Next, we have Northeast. We have fortunes. We use number eight to refer to fortune. It implies work fortune, existing client fortune, and business and health. 
Finally, we come to the center. Center, we have lot, we have disaster this year. We have we refer use disaster. We use number five to refer to disaster. It implies obstacles, accidents, illness, and misfortunes. So we have located all these stars in all direction, and next, what shall we do with it? Is to we need to apply it to our home and office. First, we have our floor pan ready, and then we stand in the middle of your home and locate east, south, west, north. If you have trouble locating east, then we can use sunrise's direction as east. Next, we can slice your floor pan into eight equal pieces, like I did on the diagram, forty-five degree for each sector. Then we pluck all the stars we have just mentioned from star number one to number nine into the correct directions. For instance, if your main entrance is of your home is at the south, this year we will have star number nine. It implies happiness will come to your home this year. Now we can place function item to boost your fortune. We will first start with the east, and we will go clockwise. East, we have gossip. We can use colorful lamp to lower the energy of gossip. Over the southeast area, we have academic. Academic is a good for study and work promotion. We can use water plants or four stalks of water bamboo to escalate academic luck. Next, we have self. We have happiness. Again, happiness could refer to marriage, giving birth, new customers. We can use colorful lamp, red carpet, red fresh flowers with no thorns to escalate happiness luck. But remember, we will always need to use fresh flowers and never use fake flowers, as fake flowers will create fake outcomes. Next, we have southwest. We have illness in this area. We can use a pair of gourd if you can locate this in Chinatown, or if you cannot locate a pair of gourd, we can use a big bowl of coins to lower the negative energy of illness. Next, we have destruction over the west area. We can use one portion of white vinegar and three portion of tap water, pour into a glass cup, and place it over the west area to lower the negative energy of destructions. Next, we have Northwest. We have career. We can use a Cooper comeback course to escalate career luck. Everyone likes peach blossoms, so in the north area, we can use an aquarium to fill up with tap water and place an oxygen pump into it. This will help to escalate love and social relationships. Next, we have Northeast. Northeast, we all love fortunes. We can use a three layers fortune fountains and a colorful lamp to escalate fortune luck and to maximize business opportunities. Finally, we have the center sections where the disaster star lies this year. We can use a Cooper gong or a bowl of coins to lower the accident and obstacle negative energy. So that's it for Feng Shui 2022, and I assume. Everyone would like to know、uh, about your luck as well. So allow me to tell you briefly the twelve zodiac luck in the year of Tiger. So first of all, we need to know what year you were born in. According to the Chinese astrology computations, we need to born after the beginning of spring day. Usually, it is February the fourth in order to say you belong to that year's first sign. For instance, at the beginning of spring day, this this year is February fourth, two thousand twenty twenty two, at four fifty eight a.m. So, anyone who born in February fourth at four fifty seven a.m. will still be an ox, not a tiger. So I have ranked the twelve zodiac from number one to number twelve, and we will start with number one, who is the king in the year of Tiger. First of all, we have Rooster. Rooster is the king of this year. There are many new opportunities at work. 
However, you should not be greedy. About family relationships, try to discuss family matters in a peaceful way and not to make big arguments. Number two, we have rabbits. Rabbits has lots of good stars shining on you this year. There will be many business opportunities and lots of good people helping you. However, always save money for rainy days and take care of your health. Next, we have gold. Gold is number three. Gold's luck is improving this year. You will receive great support from female nobles. For those who are singles, you might find your partner. And for those who are already married and want a baby, congratulations, there is a chance this year. However, be aware of spendings, and if you have an ongoing health issues, you will need to take care of it. Number four, we have horse. When you're friends with a deity, plus some good stars shining on you, your interpersonal relationship and luck at work are very ideal. However, be cautious when signing documents, and please pay attention to heart-related disease. Number five, we have ox. Ox luck is greatly, has greatly improved this year. Golden car and red phoenix will bring you good luck and show show luck this year. However, there might be illness or obstacles that might affect your health and work. So please be careful and avoid changing job this year. Number six, we have pig. Pig may have chance to get promoted in their work and increase in salary this year. If you encounter problems, you'll receive help from the nobles. However, you should aware things could have an unfavorable ending. For instance, don't sit behind you and work colleagues steal your work idea. Number seven, we have dog. Although you are free from negative influence in the year of tiger, you should still pay attention to health and safety of the family members and yourself. Fortunately, this year, you are a friend with the deity, so your friends will help you through difficulties. Number eight. So let me slide to the slides to number eight. Number eight, we have rats. Rats luck is average this year. Rats should pay more attention to health and safety of your family members and yourself. For ladies who are single, there's a good luck star called Rat Scorpion. It will increase your attractiveness. Number nine, we have snake. Even though the snake will clash with the gossip deity this year, your luck star Lunar and Prestige will bring friends that will offer great help for you. Just avoid unnecessary gossips and negative conversations. Number 10, we have Tiger. Tiger clashes with the deity this year. But not all targets with clash with the deity will have bad luck. Only 70% of the people will get affected only. So watch out your relationship with your parents and your supervisor. Watch out your health as well. Be careful with the words you say as people might backstab you. However, Tiger is good in academic field this year. You might get promoted in your job or you will get famous very easily. Number 11, we have Dragon. Dragon, we need to pay attention to social relationships and avoid gossips and fights and look after your health and your family members as well. Nevertheless, you can borrow luck from good luck signs like roosters by wearing a bird-shaped pennant or boost up your home function and enhance some positive energies. Lastly, we have monkeys. Monkey, you will need to pay attention to your health, money, work, love relationship, as you're clashing with the deity this year. Fortunately, you have heaven solutions to solve money and work problems. However, heaven solutions will not solve illness problem. So please pay attention to your health. So what remedy do we have for, uh, for those signs of clashing with the deity? Like we have for monkey first, monkey is clashing with the deity and it ranks it with number 12. So monkey can wear bird shaped pendants or wear some yellow coffee beige color clothing to enhance the look. And then next we have tiger. Tiger is also clashing with the deity. And then we can wear a pig or a bird shaped pendant. Or you can wear blue and black clothing to escalate your luck as well. Next, we have snake. Snake, we can wear bird, bird shaped bird, bird shape pendants, or we can wear green, green color clothing to escalate your luck. 
Lastly, we have pig. Pig can wear rabbit pendants or wear some white, super gray, blue, or black color clothing to escalate your luck. So thank you very much for today. Again, I wish everyone good health, good fortune, good luck in the year of Tiger, and go hey fa choy. Thank you so much, John. Kudos to you for conducting such a lively and interesting session of tips for the new year of the Tiger. And Kathy, those snacks and drinks look really delicious. I wish I could try some of those right now. Thank you so much for sharing them with us, Kathy. So a huge thank you to all of our guests and guest speakers for joining us today across three different time zones. It is now time for our Q&A session, which we'll dive into now. Just one second. And I know some, uh, some questions were submitted already. So what I'll do is I think I'll read those out in order. So for this Q&A, if our presenters would like to come back on camera, uh, we'll do kind of a group Q&A session here. And um, so let's see, the first question that was submitted uh, was one that was answered through the chat already, but uh, I can address that here. So a few people asked if we'd be sharing the recipes. Yes, definitely. So when we send this webinar uh, recording, we're gonna send the recording of this webinar out to everybody tomorrow afternoon. So tomorrow being February 16th, so when we send the recording to everyone, we will include some recipes uh, probably as an attachment. So um, if you don't get it in that email, you can expect to get it, to get it shortly after that. Uh, so let's see. Um, and who's next? Okay, so uh, Natalie is asking, uh, could you please repost or show us some of the slides of each Zodiac? Um, I suppose so. John, would you mind if I bring back uh, your slide deck up again? If you wanted to go back and show some of the different Zodiacs again? Sure, sure, sure. You can do that. Okay. Yeah, we have time for it. So if, I think we, we might as well. There we go. Thanks, John. Yeah, so okay, Natalie, sure. so just take a look at your screen here. The main portion there should show some of the different ones. Nice. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Yeah, Natalie, I'll, um, we'll sorry, leave that sorry, Dan. for a little bit. Hi, Dan. Sorry, this is Ewan. Um, for all those out there, we'll also be, uh, we can also certainly send out um, a copy of uh, John's uh, deck as well. John, that's fine with you? Yes, of course. Sure. Please yeah. send it out. Yeah, we'll send it out to all participants today as well, so you can take a closer look. Okay? That's a great idea. Thanks, Yuan. You're welcome. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds great. Uh, the next question we have here is from Cheryl. Let's see. Um... Cheryl asks, she says, my manager is from Malaysia and always gives the employees $118 in the red envelopes. Is there any significance to the number 118? I know eight is a very lucky number. I don't oh, know who yes, is this that is my one. department, right? <laughs> uh, eight is the fortune. And now actually we're having the eighth luck. So um, eight is the fortune, um, auspicious numbers. So 118 means always have good fortunes. That's great. Thanks, John. You're and uh, let's see. Um, Candace is asking, what is the status of Hong Kong? Um, oh, what is the status of regarding Hong Kong's reopening? Uh, what's the status of Cathay Pacific resuming services again? Uh, sure, I can take that. Uh, as we know, it is a very fluid situation right now. Things are changing. Uh, almost on a, on a daily basis. Uh, that goes for our schedule as well. We do remain hopeful that towards the second quarter of 2022 and definitely the second half that we do anticipate that we will um, be resuming a more uh, full schedule to Hong Kong. Uh, thank you, Asad. That's great. And uh, Ira is asking, um... Uh, oh, does this, is this session ending at 2 p.m. EST, and how do we find out if you won the gift card? That's a good question, Ira. So, yeah, we are wrapped up now, and uh, we're just going a few minutes over time just for the Q&A, uh, just so that we can answer your, your questions. And um, that's a good question about the gift cards. So we're actually going to be doing uh, the draw probably um, – we're going to be doing it this week for sure, but we're going to be drawing from names of people that were signed in for the entire duration of the webinar. But if you happen to leave past 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, you're still going to be eligible. So that's fine. If you were signed in from the start time right up until 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, we'll make you eligible for the prize draw. And that's, uh, that's a good question, though. 
Okay, let's see. Uh, who's next? Yeah, Nadine was asking uh, about sharing the Zodiac slides. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so Nadine, we can include, uh, we can reach out to you uh, very shortly in the next 24 hours or so uh, and include those slides in an email to you. We're happy to do that. And Belinda is asking, uh, so this is, this is for Master John. Uh, John, what is considered the main door when living in a condo? We use very complicated feng shui method to calculate um, your home feng shui actually. And um, we use the apartment door, the, build, the building main entrance to calculate feng shui. But um, based on most people, most people couldn't do any um, professional measurements. We'll basically use your own door to locate the south, west, north, east. So we can use the yearly feng shui systems to apply on all those locations you have uh, measured on your iPhone or your compass. So this is a more simple way to measure your um, yearly feng shui. But uh, in a professional way, we we'll use the main entrance of the building to measure your home feng shui. Ah, thanks so much, John. And Claudia says, uh, I miss Hong Kong food. Uh, Kathy, any tips on how to do more Cantonese cooking day to day? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can. Um, my tip would be actually to focus on one single dish and just spending your entire evening on that one dish. Because if you think about, you know, Cantonese cuisine and like creating a full dinner, there's going to be more components than just one dish. But if you just choose one thing you really crave and just focus on perfecting that one dish for the evening, then it doesn't feel as daunting of a task. Um, so like, for example, I'll miss something like bo zai fan and I'll be like, okay, that is going to be the one focal dish that I'm going to make tonight. And I'm not going to like put any concentration on any other dishes. That is going to be the one thing that I make. Um, so that would be my recommendation is to focus on one thing you really miss and putting all your time and effort into that and being like that one dish is enough to serve the family, myself. I don't have to do anything else on top of that. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy. And I'll read out one more question here, uh, before we wrap up, uh, Teresa asks, can you still purchase hot sauce through Fang Kitchen? Yes. Fan Kitchen is still going on. Um, we created during the pandemic, but it's been something that's been quite successful. So uh, we are still selling it, even though the restaurants are open. So you can definitely order hot sauces and merchandise on there. Good question. That's amazing. Thanks, Kathy. And just because we did start a couple minutes after one o'clock Eastern time, I will read out one more here because this is a good one. Sean asks, uh, Kathy, what is your go-to dish? My go-to dish, like to cook at home, or I think it's for cooking. For cooking at home, yeah. For cooking at home, <laughs> God, there's so many different. But the one thing I always do, actually, is botong. Is I always make soup because I have so many fond memories um, growing up, where either it's like my mom or my grandmother, and I have two kids now. Um, I always came home to like a room that smelled of rice and some sort of tonic and soup that's like nurturing and good for you. So I want to recreate that and I do that for my kids. So I've got my kids onto the habit of drinking um, soups and tonics. It's a really healthful way to um, incorporate culture and just like have a good healthy lifestyle. So we always have come. I'll show you one that we have right now actually. <laughs> We always have things like this at home. This one is made with pork spare ribs, walnuts, lotus nut, um, and mountain yam. So that's something we make. It's like a weekly basis. You don't have to make this every day. You make one and that's good enough for a couple days. So you probably make one or two a week. That's fantastic. Thanks, Kathy. And I made uh, the camera feed slightly larger if you wanted to show the audience one more time. Oh yeah, here. Yeah, this thank you. The the soup, yes. Nice. <laughs> okay, thanks so much, everyone. Uh, I want to thank uh, 
I want to thank all travel agents and travel professionals that attended this webinar today. It was fantastic having you all here for this wonderful virtual experience. And um, yeah, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Master John Choi, Chef Kathy Fang, uh, Marius Karstensen, Asad Shah, and uh, of course, I'd like to thank Yuen Can Wong and Linda Ho. And um, yeah, and I'd also like to give a huge shout out to Chris Vandenhoeven of Cathay Pacific Airways. It was great having you all here live with us today for this wonderful virtual experience. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, thanks so much for joining us.